welcome to this and this is my review as the um, title says of the the latest NWA showcase show the uh, fourth episode um, of season two as I like to call it um, as we are here and um, I just thought I would come on and give my thoughts like and I'll probably have to do this for everyone because I always get questions on this of why I do this why I um, uh, review these shows. I seem to be one of the, I, the only, I'm the only person I know of that's reviewing these shows. Um, I'm sure there's probably somebody on a website somewhere else that is reviewing them, but um, I have not found them, so there you go there. But um, I will answer that question after I'm done because I, I am going to be a little bit more critical of um, this show probably because we're four, we're four episodes in, so I, I think um, there's a lot of criticisms I can give to it that I think is uh, fair. So there we go. Um, we started the the uh, <clears throat> night off. We had the introductions, and um, now on colors, and 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 it wasn't the same way when I watched when I saw it because I went online just to make sure to see if it was any different. But on colors, the intro again was messed up as it was Mike DiBiase, um, which they got right this time. And then um, they had Oliver John, but then under Oliver John, when they had Oliver John up, they still had Mike DiBiase up. But when I went online, they had fixed it, so I'm not sure exactly what that was about. But the intro, but so, but so the intros were, I, I guess we will we will put up because I'm not exactly sure what happened, so I won't put the blame on anybody. But um, that happened on my on my television. Um, and then we started out. And uh, the first match of the night was the Cutler Brothers versus the Skull Crushers. And uh, the Cutler Brothers, they gave a little um, in-picture promo, too, um, as they kind of introduced themselves. Not a very good promo. Um, talked about gold cards and, and GNC, and, and I was just kind of like, what are they talking about? Not good. I don't think related to a lot of people. But was what it was against the skull crushers this was not the um not the squash that we had seen the skull Pru skull crushers do have done in the past per se this was a little bit more competitive but still a squash match um i am digging the skull crushers i, I like how they have built them up i wish they had built up some of the other stars the same way but um this was okay um though and I noticed this right away. Apparently, when they did the play-by-play, -play, they did not sync the play-by-play -play up with the video right because it was about a second ahead of the actual video. So you were hearing calls before you actually saw it, which was not really cool. Particularly when they were doing pins and that sort of thing, it was just it, it really kind of was kind of bugging. Particularly when we got into some of the more competitive matches, but that happened. The Skull Crushers got to be on the mic. Um, they're okay. <clears throat> They're about as good as the Road Warriors were. I mean, these, these guys are supposed to be like the Road Warriors, and they're about as good as the Road Warriors were probably in early in their career on the mics, which means they were good for what they were, I guess is the way to put it. And um, called out the Young Bucks because they had the whole feud thing going. Um, instead, uh, Cade Murdoch came out, and uh, there was a big pull apart, which really I didn't think worked very well. And um, I think could have done at least a little better. I think it would have been better if they would have fought kind of like the Young Bucks did last week with them. And then uh, they went to commercial break. I think that would have worked a little better. My my own personal opinion, but it was what it was. And, again, they're you know kind of setting up this tag team uh, division, which they've done a good job of setting up the tag team division. It's just I don't think they've done a good enough job of setting up other things. But we will get to that. Um, next... We had a match for the NWA North American Championship uh, with Johnny Goodtime versus the champion Mike DiBiase making his um, wrestling debut. He had, uh, I believe on the first show, he had uh, actually had a match. And, um, yeah, this was kind of strange in a lot of ways um, in that... You know, Mike DiBiase is supposed to be, you know, like, for North America, the guy that would be in line for uh, that championship um, versus Blue Demon Jr. 
And the problem with that is that Mike DiBiase went out there versus um, this guy, uh, Johnny Goodtime. And Johnny Goodtime looked like a jobber. They kind of portrayed him not to be, you know, kind of on the same level. Um, they didn't really talk a lot about him and until, like, during the match. And then he had a competitive match with Mike DiBiase. And in my opinion, it hurt Mike DiBiase. Mike DiBiase needed to go out there and have a good showing, kind of a good squash match, like they have been doing with the um, Skull Crushers. Maybe not as much of a squash, but it didn't need to be a competitive match with... Um, you know, headlocks and that sort of thing. It needed to be kind of Mike DiBiase dominating this guy. That's just kind of my opinion. That's kind of how I would have booked it because I, I do think this match didn't do a lot. Didn't do a lot for Mike DiBiase, um, to be really honest. But um, that's just kind of the way I did it because this guy, you know, he's the North American champion, and it was good to see him on there though. Um, that's one of my gripes with the show is that even though we've seen Blue Demon wrestle once. Um, we've seen the tag team champions, um, but of course we, you know, we, I, I doubt we would see the um, North American tag team champions. So that would be kind of cool, but I, I you know, it, th that would be, in my opinion, kind of good because you're, you're, you seem to be building up your tag team division. So if you could get the North American champions there, that would be good. Um, and the same thing with, uh, you know, the national champion as well. Um, I think that would be good as well because you are talking about, you know, the U.S. for this show. Uh, we haven't seen Mischief yet. We haven't even heard Mischief's name, um, and I think that's a mistake. And the same thing with Mike Quackenbush, though I can kind of understand the Mike Quackenbush thing a little bit better because I, I doubt I doubt we would ever see him on these shows simply because of uh, scheduling problems with Mike, but um, or travel problems would be would be more accurate. But um. You know that that would be more of the of things I would like to see on the show, but I I, I did feel being that this was Mike DiBiase's wrestling debut, um, they could have done a little bit better job of building him up a little bit. But uh, that that this that's really my biggest gripe with this show would probably be this match because I I really don't think it it did Mike DiBiase a lot of credit. So there you go. Uh, next they we did a video um or a uh, intro, uh, not intro, a promo with uh, Blue Demon Jr. Um, with uh, Marquez in the ring and um, trying to uh, interview Blue Demon Jr. And um, we didn't know who it was at first. This music hit, and then they said it was Joey Ryan. Except they didn't show Joey Ryan. They showed Vanderpile, Joey Ryan's manager. Um, and we didn't see Joey Ryan for a while, which was kind of another faux pas, in my opinion. Um, particularly for editing. I mean, these aren't live shows. You would think they'd be able to edit it. And if they if they couldn't, <clears throat> why not just keep the camera on Marquez and Blue Demon as far as the editing goes? I think that would have made a little bit more sense. But they came out, um, basically told Blue Demon Jr. that somewhere, sometime down the line there, he was going to have to face uh, Joey Ryan, blah, 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 blah. Um, wasn't the greatest thing in the world. Wasn't the worst thing in the world either. It was just kind of there... Um, so that is what we got there. With commercial came back, and we had Ninja Vigilante 4 taking on Terex, who I've never seen before, but is kind of a big bat type of guy. Um, came out, uh, this was kind of funny, it was entertaining, in that uh, Ninja Vigilante um, tried to do kung fu type moves on Terex and didn't do anything to Terex as Terex was trying to be, you know, the sportsman and shake. Ninja Vigilante's hand. Um, this just pissed off Terex, and Terex uh, picked little Ninja Vigilante 4 up and slammed him to the mat and with a choke slam, and then did the big splash off the ropes and uh, killing Vigilante 4. And uh, was pretty good. Terex seemed to be pretty much over um, with the crowd, which was kind of good. I've never seen this guy before. Um, maybe I have, and not under this name, but. Um, if they build him and um, Muscle Gang up as kind of, you know, the two big, you know, kind of monsters, I think that would be a good little thing to do And um, as far as farther down the road. But that's what we got. And we went to another commercial break, and we came back, and we got Oliver John versus Brent Albright. Now, if 
you've watched a lot of my videos, you know I'm a big Brent Albright fan. So I've seen Brent Albright in other places. I've never seen Oliver John before, not that I know of. And um, this was not a good match. And this match was giving eight a lot of time. Um, I would say at least 15 minutes, maybe as much as 20. I didn't time it, so I really don't know. But this was giving a very long, long time. Um, it went two segments, so it probably went about 20 minutes. Um, and was not very good. I, I would say only because it was a bit boring. It probably needed to be a little bit more impactful. Um, you know, I've seen Brent Albright wrestle. I've seen him wrestle elsewhere. I've seen him wrestle in lots of places, and I've seen him um, do a little bit better. Um, I understand what the NWA is doing. They're trying to have you know a more old school type of booking, type of or not even booking type of in ring um, matches. But at some point, I do think you have to kind of ratchet it up just a little bit um, and have a little bit more impact than particularly in the main events, uh, particularly if you have a long main event like this, because I got bored watching this, to be honest. Um, really wasn't buying it. Though I'm not really buying the Border um, Patrol, to be honest. I, I, I don't think it's... I, I think the... Um, I think Joey Ryan... And Anderson did a much better job as the evil, bigoted Americans than these guys are doing. And um, so there is that. So this show was not all that great. Um, again, I know I've, I've said this before. I, I don't think these shows have been as good as the uh, shows that the NWA originally put on colors. Um, I think those were, even though the production values weren't as good, and um, there was a lot of other weird things going on. I think the the matches were better. I think the storylines were a little bit better. And particularly in the last couple of shows, I, I really thought there were a lot of good promos. It really looked like they were onto something. Then we got to these shows, and it's just it's just not the same. Maybe it's just because it's so different. I don't know. And um, I will say this: I don't necessarily blame the NWA as much as it to me. It seems more like Big Vision Entertainment screw-ups um, are hurting this show in a lot of ways. Um, the booking, I think, has been good, and I think the wrestling could be a little bit better. Um, though I won't be extremely hard on the shows, um, even though we're going to have a lot more, um, until I see the second kind of tapings that come, or the group of tapings that are coming up now and seeing if they change up a little things and what worked, what didn't work. But there were a lot of things on those um, original shows that I really liked. I liked the fact that um, they did they, they did talk about all the world, all the champions, particularly the world champions, the major champions um, for the show. Um, the fact that they did a little bit better job of hyping up the local NWA promotions around the country, particularly the major shows. Um, I like that sort of thing. I think it really worked. I understand that this, that the, that the Hollywood showcase shows, um, that they're taping in Hollywood, um, are meant to be uh, shows that they can syndicate out um, to other TV outlets. And however, I don't see anything particularly on these shows because there's been so many just weird stuff with the production that if I was, you know, head of a, head of a station. Um, it'd be very hard for me to want to pick up one of these shows. I think it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here, because again, I, I think if you look at you know the shows before, even though the pro the, the production values weren't good, everything else was good. The editing was good. Um, I thought the uh, the commentating was was adequate, and um, the, the booking was good. I thought it was entertaining. I thought a lot of the matches were entertaining. One thing that I, I have not liked about um, these shows is we haven't had as much Lucha Libre, which um, was something I really liked about the other shows. Is we got a lot of that, and I thought that it really worked, and um, it would be something that hopefully we see more of down the line. Um, I have I, it, there's a lot of um, particularly the second group of tapings for this group of shows that we're kind of in the middle of now that I haven't been able to see. Um, though there's a lot of stuff that I have. I do know that's going to happen. Um, there's some stuff I don't know what's going to happen either, which might be good. But um, there's just you know, it's, there's just there's something off about about a lot of this. Um, as it always seems like there there'll be one good thing on the show, and but but there's just the one good thing. Um, one thing that I do think that would be good is if they had one kind of constant um, main group of guys that they were using. 
because uh, too often we get guys in there that we haven't heard of or that you know you're, you're asking yourself okay which one of these guys is supposed to be the star which of the guys are we gonna see again and um, so there, there's a lot of those types of things but um, again um, I do these reviews because I do think the NWA is important um, I think it can be important particularly when it comes to indie wrestling around the country I'm a firm believer of that I know a lot of people probably don't understand that but as somebody who has been to bad indie shows and understands the fact that there are bad indie shows and that you need something like the NWA to kind of protect wrestling consumers um, from bad indie shows and I think that's what the NWA ultimately could do is 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 kind of protect not just the wrestling fans but also the wrestlers from just bad indie shows and bad promoters and all that sort of thing um, and to me that is something that they can do and so that's one of the reasons why I think that's good um, among a lot of other things but um, again that's why I, I do these reviews I try to be a little bit more I, I'm not going to say overly critical but I try to you know add um, things that I, I think a little bit more constructive criticism I guess unless it's something you know like like the uh, DiBiase thing, which I, I just I just I don't think that worked at all, and I think it really hurt um, DiBiase just from me watching it. But um, and I try to be you know a little bit more that way because I do understand that there's you know you've got the NWA is trying to do what they're trying to do. I'm sure Big Vision Entertainment, while is probably on board, is trying to do what they're trying to do too. And I'm sure it's not real easy, and there's a lot of that sort of thing going on. So it wouldn't be fair to just lump everything on the NWA. Um, because I do feel a lot of the problems I have with the show um, really have probably more to do with Big Vision um, because I've seen enough of Big Vision stuff to where I can see kind of their fingerprints on some of the stuff I don't like. Um, but, but you know, again, the NWA, you know, um, I, I would say it's pr they're probably the ones pushing more for the type of wrestling we're seeing, which isn't bad, but I think that you need... I think they need to do a better job of creating the stars that need to be created um, to have the type of matches that they want to have and that put on the type of wrestling they want to have. I think that you have to have that. I don't think they've done a good enough job of that as of yet. And um, I don't think, you know, four shows in, and I'm still not too sure we know who the main stars of the NWA showcase as a show are going to be. And I think that's somewhat of a problem. But. Anyways, um, that's all for this show. Um, this week will probably be a bit interesting. There's at least, hopefully, if, if, if everything works out, it will be this week. Um, there will be a very interesting review of um, something that I want to do. And some other things that um, I'm going to try to not do as many Q&As this week. But um, we'll see how that goes. But uh, anyways, that is all for this. Um, another wrestling show showcase, NWA Wrestling Showcase, done and uh, finished. Uh, for those of you that do watch it and for those of you that are interested in it, please comment and uh, that sort of thing because people are watching and people, um, you know, I, I, I think that um, some creative criticism, creative criticism um, is good, not just, you know, just criticism to be critical. But anyways, with that, I'm out. Have a good one. And later.